Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about YouTube. We're going to talk about YouTube monetization and Google being in hot water. Uh, Google has been accused of violating its own terms of service. Now, I have to wonder if this could not kick off another ad apocalypse. I hope as a content creator, it does not. And Google actually is denying, uh, denying the allegations. But it is really interesting that this is happening now when Google is actually trying to drop its threshold for monetization on YouTube. You only need uh, 500 subscribers now, I guess, to get monetized. And I'm going to be honest, I have seen a lot more ads on YouTube that uh, I, I was kind of surprised to see. Some of the uh, subjects that, that the ads were covering a lot of, you know, back in the day, they used to have a lot of really dodgy health uh, products and, you know, firearm related ads and stuff like that. And I haven't seen those on YouTube so much in a while. I've seen them on Rumble, you know, because there's a certain audience they're going after, right? But uh, I have seen more of those on YouTube now. So I think what's going on is beggars can't be choosers. I think with uh, the ad revenue dropping down, like it is, it's, it's dropped uh, 3% year over year. I think that YouTube is definitely uh, looking to make as much money as they possibly can. That's the same reason that they are lowering the uh, barrier to be eligible for its monetization program. Now, the, the double-edged sword of that is if we get a lot of people coming in that are putting out uh, really low low quality content, even lower than Clownfish TVs, but like really nasty stuff, that could kick off another ad apocalypse. So this is... Um, yeah, you know, it's going to be a really, uh, really interesting situation. I'm going to talk about this uh, before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture and tech news. This is coming from the uh, Search Engine Journal. Uh, 9 to 5, Google had it. The original article was actually on the Wall Street Journal. It says, Google's in hot water, billions at stake as YouTube ads found to violate its own terms of service. Uh, the Wall Street Journal reports that 80% of YouTube ads violate the terms of service, potentially costing Google billions in refunds. Uh, research reveals that 80% of YouTube ads across the web violate Google's terms of service. Advertisers have reportedly been overcharged, and potential refunds could result in a financial loss for Google. These findings bring to light serious concerns with possible far-reaching consequences. New findings reported by the Wall Street Journal reveal that approximately 80% of the ads YouTube serves, uh, serves across the web have breached its own terms of service, making them subject to refunds. This could cost Google billions of dollars, adding to the company's existing troubles, such as a growing discontent with search results and two ongoing antitrust lawsuits. Google refutes the claims made in the report, saying its methods are inaccurate. So what is going on here? As I understand, we'll talk a little bit more about it, is they are accusing Google of putting ads, YouTube ads, on uh, dodgy websites. Because when you, uh, you know, advertise on YouTube, you're not just advertising on YouTube, but you're also potentially advertising on apps. Uh, they might run those videos on, you know, players on different websites or whatever. And supposedly the complaint is Google was running the YouTube ads on low quality websites. So I'm like, do you have to go through, you know, with a fine tooth comb and look at every article on every site or what's the deal here? But um, they said, this is what's what's going on. Uh, Google's YouTube advertising practices are under scrutiny. Advertisers pay YouTube to display their ads on the platform before or after videos, correct? However, according to research by Adalytics, about half of those ads are not actually shown on YouTube. This is actually not accurate. Uh, and Google is actually correct in this. And I'll tell you as, as someone who's advertised before, sometimes the ads are on uh, partner sites. I think they call it like extended reach or something like that, where they actually will show your ad outside of YouTube on other video players elsewhere, right? Uh, so they're mad that apparently some of these websites that these ads are showing up on don't, don't uh, pass muster. Uh, YouTube also shows ads on other websites and mobile apps through its Google Video Partners program. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Google claims that these third-party sites provide the same ad experience as YouTube with audio-enabled, fully visible ads that can be skipped. However, Adalytics found that ads on these partner sites are muted 80% of the time. 
autoplay off to the side of the screen and cannot be skipped. In other words, the ads advertisers pay YouTube to display are not receiving the exposure or experience that YouTube promises. And it's not just that, it's people are complaining about where the ads are turning up to. The financial impact is substantial. Brands usually pay $100 for every 1,000 views for their ads on third-party sites. Expecting high quality ad placements, uh, analytics found that lower quality ads were typically shown instead, selling for only $5 per thousand impressions. In other words, brands are paying a premium price, expecting their ads to be prominently featured on YouTube, but in reality, more than half of their ad budgets are spent to show inferior ads on non-YouTube properties. This difference in price and quality represents a major discrepancy, costing advertisers a lot of money. Actually, I think it's spelled out pretty, I'm going to be honest, uh, as somebody who worked in marketing and I've run campaigns for people, uh, you know, AdSense campaigns, AdWord campaigns, uh, and video campaigns, I think it's spelled out pretty clear. They actually give you the option when you start the campaign. They're like, hey, uh, you know, do you want to just keep these on YouTube or do you want to, you know, have like an expanded reach? You can do that. I don't know. Ads running on low quality sites. Here we go. Adalytics study examined uh, ad campaigns from over 1,100 major brands representing billions of ad impressions between 2020 and 2023. So everything's going back to this one study. Large brands with ads inappropriately placed on disreputable websites include John. What is a disreputable website? Please define what a disreputable website is. Include Johnson and Johnson, American Express, Samsung, Sephora, Macy's, Disney Plus, and the Wall Street Journal. Even government organizations such as Medicare, the U.S. Army, and Social Security, and uh, New York City municipal agencies were impacted. Their ads were found on websites spreading, here we go, on websites spreading misinformation, hosting pirated content, and other low-quality sites. Porn. This contradicts Google's pledge that ads would only appear on high-quality, carefully screened sites. By high-quality, carefully screened sites, I think they mean... Uh, websites that pass muster for for uh, AdWords, AdSense, um, you know, and also you have to realize there are networks out there too. Now, so th this is a whole nother wrinkle. There are ad networks out there that actually manage uh, a whole bunch of websites, and they run their ad their ad network on a whole bunch of, and especially like pop culture and stuff. Um, they run all of their uh, their ads on you know maybe dozens or hundreds of sites. So, you know, they're going to be running the same ads on all these sites, you know, if they're part of that network. In response, advertisers seem justifiably upset. Who? And are taking action to get their money back for these inappropriate ad displays. Who? This threatens to damage Google's relationships with advertisers and credibility. Joshua Lowcock, global chief media officer at ad agency UM Worldwide, tells the Wall Street Journal, this is an unacceptable breach of trust by YouTube. Google must fix this. Fix this now and fully refund clients for any fraud and impressions that failed to meet Google's own policies. Google released a statement refuting claims made by Adalytics. Google said the report used unreliable sampling and proxy methodologies and claims about the Google Video Partners Network were extremely inaccurate. Google wants to clarify that the overwhelming majority of video ad campaigns run on YouTube, not GVP. It's a small separate network used to help advertisers reach additional audiences uh, by over 20%. You know, blah, blah, blah. Potential consequences. Here we go. The revelations from the analytics report could have the following far-reaching consequences for Google. Loss of trust and credibility. They might lose faith in Google. Impact on Google's revenue. Google may have to pay back the billions of dollars to advertisers due to issues with its ad systems. Regulatory scrutiny and legal action. The report could encourage, could encourage government regulate. Here's the problem. This is what happened with the, the adpocalypse, guys. Government got involved. The report from Adalytics could encourage government regulators to investigate Google's advertising systems and policies more thoroughly. And right before the 2024 election, just I'm just going to put it out there. And there's, there's always very curious timing when these sorts of things happen. Like, oh, what could... What could these uh, mis misinformation uh, uh, mongers, you know, what could they use to reach people? Oh, they could use they could use YouTube ads. They could, you know, what I'm saying. Uh, we can't have that. We can't have that. Advertisers may pursue legal claims against Google. 
Um, they said there are a few ways that they could address this if there were changes to the digital advertising ecosystem. New industry best practices or rules could be established. There it is to hold companies to higher standards. New technologies could be developed to verify better that ads are appearing alongside appropriate content. Governments could pass laws or regulations mandating more transparency and accountability. So basically, these are all potential things that could potentially happen. Now, Google uh, has responded. They said the, the report wrongly implies that most campaigns spend uh, runs on GVP rather than YouTube. That's just not right. The overwhelming majority of video ad campaigns serve on YouTube. Video advertisers can also run ads on GVP, a separate network. And we saw that third parties. Uh, say, for example, you're a gaming advertiser. You might want to reach people on YouTube who love gaming, but also on websites and apps that cater to those groups. While only a small percentage of video ads appear on GVP, it's effective. We've seen adding GVP to YouTube campaigns increase reach by 20% for the same budget. So they're saying, no, this is actually business as usual and there's nothing to see here. Of course, I mean, of course they're going to, but there's definitely something going on here. Um, it does feel like, you know, the advertising landscape is changing at a shocking rate. And I, I do think that we're going to see uh, advertising come under attack because if there's no money, you know, if there's no money, then that crumbles a lot of the uh, the infrastructure. I can totally see YouTube and Google being under attack leading up to the 2024 election. I know it's, you know, everything's political. No, actually, normally I'm not like that. But it is very curious timing. You know, it's like, oh, we got to put some got to put some new rules in place, you know, so we can't have uh, certain candidates, you know, uh, running ads on on websites. We don't. God forbid we've got certain people running ads on websites, uh, you know, next year because that, that, you know, or God forbid we have certain creators. I think that's really where it's going to go. We have certain creators monetizing their content. Uh, we don't want those creators to have their content alongside wholesome content. Uh, I mean, it's bad enough that a lot of YouTubers are being deboosted in the algorithm. Now, I, I, I'm i going to be honest. I don't think as, it's as severe as it was. I know there have been some people that have been um, blacklisted lately or booted lately or lost monetization lately. And that's usually in response to complaints like this. Um it just personally, it, it doesn't seem like there's as much of that going on. And I think it comes back to Google being really freaking desperate, uh, being desperate to make as much money as they possibly can make because they've been losing money. But, um, you know, the threat of losing more advertisers might actually encourage them to lay down the law with with, uh, you know, more regulations, uh, which, you know, or a bunch of advertisers get together and decide they're just going to pull out completely. I mean, that could that could lead to another apocalypse. Right. And that that's kind of a scary thing. But, um, you know, there's definitely something going on with uh, YouTube. The fact that they feel like they have to lower the threshold, you know, to allow people to monetize their content. Um, cause they're trying to, to, to pull creators over here and we see what's happening with Twitch right now. They're losing people to kick. And I think YouTube is losing a lot of its bigger, you know, political people anyway, to, to rumble, you know, the market share is kind of being chipped away at, and there are only so many ad dollars now to spend. And Google is used to being the biggest player and they're not going to share. So they're going to try to keep as many people I think as they can, but this, uh, this advertising thing, this might not be good. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this. I definitely want to keep an eye on it as a creator. And I hope to God it does not lead to more regulation because that is very seldom good uh, for YouTube content creators because we've seen entire niches get obliterated almost overnight. And in 99.9% .9 of the time, it's because the advertisers are bitching about something. And a lot of times the advertisers are bitching about something because the media kicked up a shit storm about something, you know, and uh, because they basically view themselves as competing with YouTube at this point. And I, I think they would do what they could do to to cripple it, especially before an election year. I'm just saying. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to the reef dot support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's the reef dot support.